The term dementia refers to a syndrome. It's not a particular disease. It refers to a progressive decline in mental abilities to the point where the individual is no longer able to maintain their independent function on a daily basis. And that has to be a decline from a prior, higher level of function. And typically, we think of it as impairing at least two cognitive domains. So let's say memory and language both have to be impaired. And most of the dementias that we deal with have a neurodegenerative cause. In other words, they're caused by a gradual deterioration in nerve cells throughout the brain. And there are various different causes for uh, these neurodegenerative diseases. This is a list here of some of the most common ones. And um, as I said, the reason we're going to talk about Alzheimer's disease primarily is not because it's at the top of the list and it begins with A. Uh, but because it's really the most common. Uh, it represents over 70% of all the dementias that we know about. Um, pathology is usually, can be present uh, by itself or in combination with other diseases, but it's far and away the most common cause of dementia. And uh, of the four drugs that are uh, widely used today for Alzheimer's disease, three of them work by increasing levels of acetylcholine in the brain. One of them doesn't work by that mechanism, but unfortunately what we came to learn was that all of these drugs work a tiny bit, but really not enough. They make patients slightly better than they would be without the drug, maybe on average about six months better, but they continue to progress, they continue to decline at the same rate that they did before taking the drug. They just are so, sort of get a bump up in terms of performance. So that meant that everybody sort of went back to the drawing board, uh, started looking again in more detail at these plaques and tangles that Dr. Alzheimer first described. And when people start, studied the plaques, what they learned was that the content of the plaque was a substance called amyloid. You've probably heard about it. And a particular form of amyloid called A-beta, or amyloid beta 42, turns out to be the thing that seems to be toxic to cells. And people studied the tangles. They found that the primary component of the tangles was a substance called tau. And there was a debate for quite a long time as to which of these substances developed first, accumulated first, and which really cause the disease to progress. Lastly, what I wanted to do is, is talk about things that perhaps all of us could do. Um, we're talking about things in the future, and one of the most common questions that I get asked is whether or not there's anything you can do, I can do, on a day-to-day -day basis that might reduce your risk for cognitive decline in the future. And um, there are some suggestions uh, there are lots of caveats around them, but I'll tell you kind of what we think we've learned. Um, and that is uh, that there are some changes in lifestyle factors that might be beneficial in reducing cognitive decline as people get older. The way in, in which people have looked at this is by having big community studies, um, evaluating people at one point in time, measuring lots of things about them, and then seeing which of those measurements seem to be related to maintenance of cognitive function over time. And one of the reasons we talk about the findings is that so many of the same things keep coming up over and over again in these studies. And they're really this that there's evidence that increased physical activity, mental activity, social engagement, and control of vascular risks alone or in combination seem to enable people to maintain cognitive function over time to a greater degree than if that, those variables are not present. Now, the reason that I say there are lots of caveats is that when you do a community study and you measure things in everybody, uh, you're not doing a control trial. So it might be that there are some innate differences in people who do these things 
that are really responsible for the maintenance of cognitive function and not the activities themselves. What we would really like to have are controlled trials with all of these variables being manipulated, but you can imagine how difficult that is to control mental and physical activity and social engagement and vascular risk. Um, but there is an effort to try to do that because obviously all of us would like to, to know what we can do on a day-to-day -day basis.